thanks for stopping by Pete Snake Bite Kit again today. Uh, today's video, what we're going to do, we're going to try and take some of the mist and the mystery out of Ford engines. I'm going to do this in two segments. One's going to be small block Ford, one will be big block Ford. Uh, one of my friends mentioned on this that uh, I was throwing around these Ford acronym engine names and so on, and not everybody, um, you know, knows what they are. So. Since I'm trying to help you understand this whole Cobra thing and maybe make some choices about the one you want to build, let's clarify some of this stuff. So we'll start with the little ones, the small blocks. So <clears throat> there's four different ones. There's an aftermarket hybrid we'll talk about, but let's start here. These are the deck heights of the two small blocks that we'll call Windsors. That has nothing to do with the royal family, by the way, before you ask. Anyway, uh, it's a V8 engine, as you know, and the taller the deck height is, the bigger the engine. So this is what, if you've ever seen a 5.0 Mustang, we all have, it has an 8.2 deck height engine. The bigger one would be a 351. These are usually just called a Windsor. Now, a number of derivatives of this one. So the 260, that's what Carol Shelby got from Lee Iacocca in that famous meeting when he said, I can build you some car for 25,000 bucks, get out of here before you bite somebody. That one, he got uh, two or three 260 engines. They didn't use very many. I think they built 50 or less of the small block Cobras with 260s. They quickly moved up to the big 289. Back in the 60s and 70s, uh, cubic inches were king of relatively small engine but it was a small car. <clears throat> 67, that engine grew into a 302, uh, and so on. This thing has been around for a long time. Made in the early 60s. Uh, my 1996 uh, f 150 has got one of those in it. So, anywho, you can make these bigger. We've all heard the term stroker motor, right? Where it's got a longer crank uh, to make the, the displacement bigger or maybe boring them out bigger. You can only go so big on the original blocks. It starts off as a four inch on these guys and you can bore them 30 or 40 over, or get risky at 60. But if you use an aftermarket block, the cylinder hole can be bored bigger because they got a lot more meat and potatoes in there to allow for that. So with the stroker kit, you can build a 331, you can build a 347, you can build a 366, 363, 366, whatever it is. Uh, that's a pretty big engine when you consider it started off here. It's got an extra hundred <laughs> uh, inches on it. Uh, but this one would be an aftermarket block to get that big. These guys, you can build one out of a 302 fairly cheaply, uh, buy a kit from Summit and have a thing bored or you know get the a block done in a machine shop so then you can make some pretty good power with these uh without a good strong aftermarket block you're not going to safely make 600 horsepower you could do it with some power adders but i guess they split apart and things happen that are bad okay the 351 windsor they had some derivatives of it but for the most part they just made a 351. uh the popular strokers on this one i've seen three 393s, I've seen 408s, um, 427 is possible with a stock block. Most of those are an aftermarket block, and they even do a 454. Definitely an aftermarket block with that one. And you can imagine it's not a whole lot bigger than this guy, right? And have something as big as a big block Chevy and looks way better. Uh, you can really make a bunch of power with that. So that's kind of fun. 351 Cleveland. This also had a bunch of different odd things we won't talk about, uh, other engine sizes for trucks and whatever, but th the main thing was 351 Cleveland. What it was famous for is having a big, big intake port. It looks like a small version of a big block Chevy, uh, their rectangle port deal. Uh, they flow a lot of air, probably too much for most street applications, unless you have a lot of compression. Um, and, and honestly, the modern cylinder heads you would buy, an aluminum version of that, they take the intake port and they shrink it down a little bit to uh, put some velocity in the port and not just having air stumbling around in there. Uh, this one made a lot of horsepower though. Uh, had, had one of those in my 70 Boss 302 that went pretty well. 
until it went like that, it made a big noise and flames came out through the shaker hood scoop and it was done. But it, it, uh, you can make power with these things. These are getting hard to find, the blocks are getting hard to find. The cast iron cylinder heads, you would spend two or three times what you would spend for a really nice set of aluminum heads. So I don't think anybody's even doing, uh, doing that. So as far as factory engines or the hybrid in here, where they took a 302 block, a 351 cylinder head, and they made a thing called a Boss 302. 69 and 70, they came in. The real Boss 302 Mustangs, not the ones they make now. Those are cool too. But a Boss 302 is a hybrid between this little uh, short deck and a gigantic cylinder head. Uh, I beat on that one pretty hard for a while. Uh, uh, late 70s, I built a pretty leaned on combination of that. I had a, a big uh, flat tappet or a, a big uh, solid roller cam, a lot of compression, uh, 8,500 RPM. It went, it was pretty fast. Uh, it didn't stay together very long. I never even was able to make a clean pass at the drag strip. It had, uh, and the roller cam wanted to come apart and come out of the car and stuff, and it was a real bummer. But the moments it went, I mean, seriously, it, it probably made. I don't know, whatever, maybe 400 horsepower for back then, which was pretty good in a little tiny motor. Um, interesting note, <clears throat> I said it's got a 351 Cleveland head on it, and it's a little engine. I worked at a place years ago, Advanced Engineering West, hi Chris, um, it had a flow bench there, and uh, Mark and I, my buddy that I worked with, we, you know, there's a formula that uh, Superflow has on uh, cylinder flow and RPM efficiency and all this stuff. So long story short, what we figured out is the optimum RPM for the Boss 302 with the heads I had on it, the exhaust reported, the intakes were stock, was 18,000 RPM. That's not gonna happen on one of these. I mean, 8,500 is pushing the structural limits of one of these things. So needless to say, way more cylinder head uh, than it needed. So um, these things were fun, but a little bit crazy. They, they built these for Trans Am and did real well with them. Now, there's an aftermarket hybrid that's kind of cool too. You take a 351 Windsor block and a Cleveland cylinder head and you have a Cleavor. I think that's how they spell it. It's a made up word anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, they take a, you can use a block from a fairly reasonably attainable uh, 351 Windsor stock block or an aftermarket one if you want. You can buy a fairly reasonable set of aftermarket aluminum cylinder heads to put them together. You've got a strong bottom end, you have a great cylinder head. Somebody makes a hybrid intake manifold to make all that happen. And I've seen some big power numbers on, on dynos for those. I haven't seen one in a car. I think it would be neat to see. Hopefully that demysticizes uh, the small block board thing. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about that, these are 60s, uh, 70s early 70 engines as far as hot rodding goes. This is what hot rodders want to build if they're building a, an era correct car, right? Uh, we, guys like me that want to build a Cobra, they want something that kind of maybe should have been in there, right? In that, in that time span. These are the only ones, these two of all of these <clears throat> that were ever in a Cobra because then they went to the big 427 motor. However, this is the one Carol Shelby wanted. I'll tell you why I think that. I don't know that for sure, but he alluded to that in a, an old interview I saw the other day, is that when Chevrolet Corvettes were starting to catch up with the small block Cobras, it's because they had come out with the 327 and probably had just gotten a hold of the 350, which was much bigger than their, their 283 and stuff. And they were starting to, to catch up. And he really wanted something in that displacement range. Ford didn't have it. You had to go from this featherweight engine to hitting the thing with a sledgehammer with the 427. And we'll talk about that more in the big block uh, one that I do. But this didn't come out until 1969. Carroll Shelby and Ford were kind of done at that point. They're for sure they were making no Cobras. So that would never happen. I believe that if this thing would have been around in 1964, there wouldn't have been a big block Cobra. There would have been a small block Cobra that went faster and had a bigger motor. Wouldn't have been as crazy as a 427. So, Hope that takes uh, some mystery out of it, put some facts with it. If you have questions about these, 
put it in the comments and I get enough of them. Why don't I do a, a, a video on the, what you're actually interested in? I will try that. Until then, stay safe. Look for the big block Ford explained video that'll come out this week sometime. Hey, thanks for watching. Take care.